India had rolled out the goods and service tax from 1st of July 2017 and no doubt India GST is one of the complex tax structures across the world and obviously the implementation of India GST in SAP is also equally complex. In this video we will try to simplify this concept to the basic level and understand how SAP treats GST and how the GST configuration or the entire GST setup happens in a simpler way. Hey this is Abhiram and welcome back to my channel. Hope you are finding my videos useful and if so then please do like the videos and share it with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified on the new videos. And if you want to contribute to my work there are two ways. One you can do a one time contribution by hitting the thanks button below the video and the second one you know it hit the join button and do a recurring contribution to my channel and get the super member benefits like discount codes, coupon codes, flat discounts to my online training courses and member exclusive videos and content. So let us jump straight into the video. To keep things simpler, I'm not going into the history of the Indian taxation. I'm not going to cover what is the pre-GST era, but we'll try to understand the basics of the India GST, how many tax rates are there and how the taxation is structured. And then we will try to see how these tax rates are calculated in SAP and what are the different configuration activities or what is the setup in SAP that is required to go ahead. In India GST, the total tax types are of four different types. So if we see the tax types, that is the central tax or it is called as CGST or the central GST. And the other one is the state GST. There is also IGST and there is UGST. So what are these different types of taxes? So whenever a transaction is happening between two different places, those places will decide what type of a tax it is. If it is happening within the same state, then always the tax will be shared into two different parts, 50-50. One share of that entire tax amount will be going to the central government through the CGST and the other 50% goes to the particular state and that will be going via state GST or SGST. So always whenever a transaction is happening within the same state, then it is two parts, CGST and SGST. Now similarly, whenever a transaction is happening within a union territory, then the tax is divided into two parts, CGST and UGST. UGST stands for the union territory GST. So again, it is 50%. It is CGST and UGST. Now, if at all a transaction is happening between two different states, then the government decided that the entire tax will be collected by IGST and this IGST amount will be completely going to the government, the central government and then later on the government will be distributing this tax amount to the respective states later point of time. So these are the four different tax types, central GST, state GST, integrated GST and the UGST or the union territory GST. Now each and every tax is having a different tax rates. So if we see the tax rates, there are multiple tax rates. It can be 5% or it can be 12%, 18% and 24%. So there are different tax rates depending upon the type of the product. So every product has a unique code called as HSN code, which is nothing but the harmonized system nomenclature. So this HSN code of a particular product will determine the tax rates. In some cases, the HSN code will also be combined with the sending and the receiving states and which will determine the final tax rate that should be applicable for that particular transaction. So there is an HSN code and HSN stands for harmonized system of nomenclature. So these are the basics of the India GST and I think this is enough for us to go ahead and understand how the GST setup will be done in SAP. So now we are in SAP and the basic thing for us for any taxation calculation is the tax calculation procedure. The tax calculation procedure is configured under the financial accounting, under the financial accounting global settings and under the tax on sales and purchases. If you go to the basic settings, here we have the check calculation procedures. So defined procedures is where we are going to define the tax calculation procedure. And this tax calculation procedure is used to define the structure of taxes. For example, how or what are the different components of taxes and how those tax values are to be summed up or subtracted and what is the formula to arrive at the final tax amount for a particular transaction. So there are two different types of tax procedures from a technical point of view. One is the conditional tax procedure and the other one is and the other one is the formula based. 
So what is the major difference is that in the formula based tax procedures, the tax amount is arrived based on the tax rate that is mentioned in the tax code. If you go to FTXP, then under FTXP, we define various tax codes. And in these tax codes, we mention what is the tax rate. So if you see here, I'll go to some tax code V0 or let me take some existing tax code. So if you see here already 9% and 9% has been mentioned and based on this, it will calculate total of 18% tax and this tax rate is completely arrived or derived from the tax code in FTXP. This is a formula based tax code. The advantage of the formula based tax code is that the tax rates definition is pretty simple. You define a tax code and you enter the tax amount and you map certain GL accounts to that tax code and that's it. Now the other type of tax procedure is the condition based tax procedure. In the condition based tax procedure, the tax rate is not directly mentioned in the tax code, but it is mentioned in the form of conditions in the transaction codes FV11 or VK11. FV11 is used to calculate tax rates for FI only transactions, be it your FI only vendor invoice for your FB60 or 65 and FI only customer invoice like FB70 and FB75. In order to determine the tax rate from a condition, it requires something called as a condition type. For example, if we take the India GST or the input GST in India, which is used with the time of procurement. And if you want to determine the tax rate for a state GST transaction, then the condition is GISG, which is given by the SAP system. So if you see here, there are various combinations of the condition records for GISG, which is nothing but your input state GST. So we can go to any of the condition depending upon at what level we want to determine the tax rate. For example, it can be determined only at a HSN code as we saw earlier, which is nothing but the control code in SAP. HSN is called as control code in SAP. We can also define it at the level of the sending and the receiving locations. For example, you are having the country here, the sending region and the region of delivery plant is nothing but your receiving location. And there are a few more characteristics like there is a vendor classification or there is a tax classification. We will come to that later, but you know, there are various combinations at which we can define the tax conditions. Similarly, if you go to VK13, here also this is used for output tax. And here also you have various tax combinations based on which you can determine what is the tax rate. So here you can define at a country and a tax code level. So what is a advantage or why did SAP bring in the condition based tax records? The reason is because if you are going by a formula based condition calculation procedure, then you need to define multiple tax codes for each and every percentage. So for example, if you're having five different tax rates like 5%, 12%, 14%, 20%, 24%, then we need to define five different tax rates and the rate for a particular tax code is always fixed. But as we discussed earlier, in GST, the calculation is much more complex than just having a single percentage at all the times. Now for a same material or the same HSN code, the tax might differ if the state is different. Each state might have its own tax rates. So that is still possible. So in that case, if we are using a formula based tax procedure, then we need to define multiple tax codes, one for each percentage so that we can use it for different states. So this is a cumbersome task and if we want to complex it a bit further, the tax rates might differ for n number of articles. There can be some hundreds and thousands of products and for all of these, if we keep on creating the tax codes, then the given namespace by SAP, if you, if you see earlier in FTXP, the tax code namespace is of two characters. We can define only up to two characters. So if you want to define some hundreds of tax codes or tax rates for different products, then we cannot create those many tax codes because we're having a limited namespace to define a tax code. So the best part is if we can create a minimal number of tax codes, but we can define multiple tax rates depending upon the scenario of that particular transaction, then that would help us to keep our master data very simple. So we can define one tax code, be it if it is input tax, then I'll define it as I1. The tax rate of this tax code will be determined based on the conditions that we are entering in VK11 or FV11. So that is the main advantage of a condition based tax calculation procedure. You can keep your master data simpler. 
all you need to do is you can go to f11 or vk11 and maintain a condition record against the combination at which you want to determine the tax rate it can be at your hsn level it can be at your hsn the sending location and the receiving location level or it can be your hsn a vendor level or a customer level whatever it is all such combinations are possible to determine the tax rate if we see from a business point of view the advantage of this one is if you want to create a tax code it is a transportable change so it's a tr request so every time you want to create a new tax code you need to move a transport request so to avoid this vk11 and f11 where we maintain the conditions are just a master data the users or the business users can directly without any transportable change they can maintain or change the tax rates in this transaction codes to keep the things simpler so this is a major difference between the conditional tax calculation procedure versus the formula based tax calculation procedure so this is where we are going to define a tax calculation procedure sap by default had given a tax calculation procedure called as tax inn for the india gst and if you go and see this we have the various tax calculation levels or the various conditions based on which the tax can be calculated if you see here we are having the cgst sgst there are various other components like there is a reverse charge there is called as which is called as rcm there is a non deductible tax there is a deductible tax so there are lot of complexities if we dig deeper but we are going to see the basic overview of the entire taxation structure of gst in sap so here we need to first define the tax procedure but in order to define the tax procedure if you see here we require what is called as a condition type so for that we are first going to define the condition types so condition type is nothing but this will determine what type of a tax it is for example if i go to jicg which we saw earlier or jisg here it says it is a tax it is defined in the form of a percentage and this is used for taxation you can define whether it is an amount or a percentage manual interest or not possible so there are various characteristics or parameters here while we are defining a condition type now if you saw earlier in f11 transaction code the moment we entered this jisg condition type and hit enter we saw various combinations at which the tax rates can be maintained those combinations are called as access sequences so if you see here when you are defining a condition type you have something called as an access sequence so let us go back and let us see where the access sequences are defined so here is where we are going to define the access sequences access sequence is nothing but different parameters at which we can maintain the condition records now if we go to jgsi which we saw as an access sequence for all the input taxes select this one and go to accesses and these are the various combinations which we saw earlier so these are defined in the form of tables if you want a new combination based on your requirement you can define a new table this table is defined in the transaction code m/04 this is change we can go to display for example see 792 and if you go to 792 these are all the different parameters which are used for this particular access sequence you can add or you can delete this and you can create a new condition type or new condition table based on your requirement and add it to this particular access sequence by clicking the new entries so if we want to dig deeper if we want to understand what are the technical values or the technical names of this different fields used in this particular table select that and go to the fields and here we can see the different fields which are used in the tax sequence or the table and what is the technical description and the technical table and the field name for this one and we can also maintain whether this is initial value to be maintained here or not whether it is a mandatory value or not all that can be maintained at a table level or at a access sequence level so if we recap the first thing is we need to define the access sequence the access sequence is defined whole at a level for entire input tax and one for the entire output tax so one jgsi which is provided by sap default which is for the input taxes jgso which is for the output taxes now once you define the access sequence the prerequisite for this is to define the condition tables which we saw we will go to the transaction code m/04 and here we are going to define a condition table with all the parameters which we feel are required to maintain the tax rates so once you create all these condition tables enter that in this access sequence and once the access sequence is ready then we are going to define the condition types and this condition type 
is defined we are going to maintain the tax calculation procedure so all the condition types that are required to maintain the tax calculation procedure are to be defined and once we define it we can go and maintain it in this format we need to define the sequence of this calculation we need to define what is the final value that is to be arrived now once the tax is calculated we need to post it onto the GL accounts so in order to post it onto the GL accounts we need something called as account keys so for each and every tax condition type wherever required we are going to assign an account key and this account key is in turn used to determine the GL account onto which it is to be posted so these are the basics about the tax calculation procedure for the India GST so in the next video we are going to understand what are the different regions what is a business place with respect to India GST and how does the business place impact the different state in which the transaction is happening and how the GST calculation is impacted based on the business places. So there are various other concepts also that we need to see the business places we are going to cover and we are going to see when a particular transaction is happening how the business place is derived and based on that how the tax rate is derived all that also we are going to see in the next video. So do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when the next video on this GST series is released. If you find the video useful, please do like the video, share it with your friends and stay tuned for the next video. Until then, take care.